So, Army of Two is a cover-based shooter, and it's most frequently played in co-op, though you can play it with an AI partner. I played both with a human partner and an AI partner back-to-back, -back, and I prefer it with an AI partner personally. So, what this game is, is a cover-based shooter with some small distinctions. There's a distinction in the cover-based mechanics and the fact that you don't snap to cover, like most cover-based shooters, but instead duck behind cover, and lean out in a more natural and organic way. Because it uses a different cover system than most cover-based shooters, it's much easier to run and gun in this game than it is in, say, something like Gears of War. You're not really snapped to the cover like you normally would be in a game such as this. Another difference between this and most cover-based shooters is that almost every objective in the game requires a second person to complete, either an actual person or an AI person. As the game is almost entirely combat-focused, this means that most of the combat revolves around using your partner in a system called aggro. Now, aggro is a very common game mechanic in which enemies obviously attack whoever is irritating them the most, but in Army of Two it's special because you can order your partner to irritate the enemies intentionally, allowing you to sneak up from behind and kill them easier. It gets to the point where you turn invisible if they manage to irritate the enemies enough while you're sneaking around. And likewise, if you're irritating the enemies, your partner becomes invisible. You can issue your partner a number of simple commands, but it's more than enough, honestly. You have the regroup command, which basically means run after me, but more importantly, the hold position command, which just turns your buddy into a turret, where they sit in place in cover and fire constantly at the enemy, allowing you to sneak around practically invulnerable as they draw all the fire. But while the nature of the enemy layouts necessitates that you use the partner commands and aggro, there are some cases where the game tries to more overtly encourage the aggro mechanics, and that doesn't work out so well. For example, there are some enemies with yellow health bars that are only vulnerable from behind, but these are quite easily cheesed if you simply knock them over with a powerful gun and then shoot them while they're on the ground. You can also enter an overkill state if either you or your partner has had the aggro for more than 10 seconds straight, and this is incredibly easy to activate. So that also makes the game quite a bit easier in the fact that it over-encourages aggro, I think. But the game is not about stopping you from cheesing it, by any means. It's about giving you options, and while the game is quite forgiving, the end result of all these extra options is still that playing smarter makes you better at the game, even if sometimes it may seem unintentional. A very intentional way to play the game smarter, for example, would be to use suppressive fire, which is an actual real thing in Army of Two. If you fire at an enemy in Army of Two, they will not be shooting at you because they will be busy taking cover, trying to avoid getting shot by your bullets. This means that you can actually stop enemies from fi firing at you by using suppressive fire, which is not a thing you can do in several other cover shooters. And an example of a less than intended way to play smart would be abusing the game's near-death mechanic. When you get knocked down from taking too much damage, you enter a near-death state where you sit on the ground. Now, your partner can revive you or drag you around, but when you're in your near-death state, you can still shoot your weapon. This effectively just turns you into a turret. You get a second health bar when in your near-death state, and they have to effectively kill you twice to make you permanently dead. This means you can just run and gun your way into a group of really difficult enemies, get knocked down, shoot them while you're knocked down and your partner is dragging you to safety, and then get healed to full. The point is, though, that by design or by accident, the game's options do encourage intelligent play. The smarter you play, the easier the game is, and playing the game smart is very beneficial toward the end, where it feels more like a strange tactics game than an actual third-person shooter with you moving pawns around a map. It's just one of the pawns is you. It's a thinking man shooter, ironically made even more thoughtful by some design flaws, and I really enjoy it. There are some things I think are unnecessary to the overall design, such as a couple vehicle sections and uh, parachuting sections, where it's nearly impossible to die, as well as the back-to-back -back mechanic, which triggers at certain points and just turns the game into an on-rail shooter, but Aside from that, it's a pretty pure-blooded action game, and it just feels good to use your brain to solve problems 
And normally that last line would be the end of the video, but I feel the need to point out that uh, one of the regular commenters on this channel, Big J, asked if I've ever tried Army of Two, and uh, by pure coincidence I was planning this video right as he asked that question, so shoutouts to him for being some kind of psychic or something.